everyone welcome back to truth live shenanigans the live show for season two episode 12. i go by the name neo nicks and i'll be the moderator for your show today february 10th 2021. for today's show we've got our quick fire question then our tls spotlight on black history with our friend of the show micah payne from black on black cinema returning and then we'll talk about hot topics where rob is talking about youtubers getting themselves killed and gianni brings up asian americans still dealing with trumpers and looking for allies so we should have a great show ahead but before we get into it let me introduce you to our wonderful host our professor writer editor journalist sports guru out of washington dc lizzie enders sounds like you're muted lizzie enders all right let's see if we can fix uh lizzie enders and we also have our other host, our very own rock star with the amazing rock band Fallen Machine coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario. We have Robbie Rock. What's up, what's up, everyone? Uh, so I guess this is going to be the trend for me for the next little bit. A lot of birthdays going on. But today is a happy 77th birthday to my father, Robert Sr. So we're celebrating. Uh, we've celebrated oh, father happy today. Birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And again, I can't compete with the best gifts. My granddaughter came by to wish him a happy birthday. So I can't compete Sweet. with that. I'm just I'm not that yeah. cute anymore. <laughs> All right. And streaming from Atlanta, Georgia, our model, actor, college student, and associate producer. And just enjoy the weekend. <laughs> enjoy the lover's weekend, even if it's self love. All right, Lizzie and were we able to get the mic fixed? Not yet. All right. All right. See if you can reconnect. Let's see if that helps. Come back in. Come back. Come back. <laughs> He's yelling. He's got the <laughs> That'd be a great time for the audio to cut back in. <laughs> <laughs> it would be right, right in the middle of that. All right. Uh, let's move. Actually, let's move on to our hot quick fire question. It's time for the quick fire. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear Yay. you. We got you back. <laughs> All right. Trolls recently hit up Halle Berry, claiming that you can't keep a man. To which she responded, "Who said I wanted to keep him?" So, so what would you have said to these trolls? Yanni Storm. Some men aren't worth keeping. So. <laughs> Very true, Robbie Rock. Right? I'd, ra I'd rather be happy and single than miserable in a bad relationship. Lizzie and Stay out of my nana and my bed. Mind your business. <laughs> and, I, and I say she got it perfectly right. No reason to keep the wrong man. So, yeah. So what were your thoughts? I mean, what did you think about what she said, Lizzie? I personally thought, you know, men can't make up their mind. In one conversation, they could call us hoes because we got too many men, right? Got too many men, got too many baby daddies, got too many people calling us, cat calling us or what have you. Then in the very next conversation, the very next sentence even, oh, but she can't keep a man. <laughs> well, make up your damn mind, but again, what I originally said, mind your business. What's going on over here? Especially, you're not my daddy. I have been raised, okay? I've already been raised. You're not my brother, who still has no control over me as a woman. And you certainly aren't the man that I'm about to kick out of whatever is going on over here. So mind your business. Holly, it's Holly Berry, people. It's Holly Berry. It's Holly Berry. And maybe, maybe these men that can't keep Holly. Maybe they can. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's that, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I'll be Stop blaming right. the woman. Yeah. yeah. So, see, I, I, I don't know what happens behind closed doors, and everybody <laughs> owns their own special brand of crazy. So, so just going to put that out there. Yep. Oh, so you're saying she's crazy. <laughs> I'm saying everybody owns their own brand of crazy. I'm saying I got my brand of crazy. It's true. Girl, you know you got yours too. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not casting <laughs> stones. True. This is just truth. <laughs> That's true. Maybe the guys can't handle her. Yeah. Or, I mean, if I'm being honest, I mean, maybe she's a little alternative. She, maybe she's. She may have had a lot of relationships. I mean, there's people who had a lot of relationships. I mean, and I feel she's like yes, yeah. she's in her yes. Similar to what Robbie said, oh, wait, I feel like we all go through stuff, and as you get <laughs> older, you start to realize. You unknowingly pick a lot of people for that wrong 
reason. So we all make mistakes and, and well, hopefully we learn from those mistakes and eventually you realize what you want yeah. and you still may not find it because, I mean, maybe she has some high standards, which what's wrong with that? And, and then she realizes the person didn't meet. And there's a lot of players out there. Let me tell you something. There's some men out there <laughs> that go after these beautiful women and, and, and they play these games and all these games going after men because I've known a few and, and they go after these beautiful women. The women think that they're, you know, the one and all these other things. And the men are lying. It happens all of the time. And it's unfortunate yeah. that, um, you know, attractive women tend to be the target um, of, of those. You know what? Beauty is relative. That's, so, that's another good point. That's true. You know, I'm looking at it from the perspective that 99.9% .9 of the women out here are attractive. They're attractive to someone. Um, but, you know, Hallie has owned her stuff. I certainly, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my mid-40s. I am probably the single most person that I know. I don't have a man. I don't want a man right now. It is the last thing that I'm concerned about and focused on. I have a career, second phase of my career that I'm trying to get off the ground. I have um, finances that I need to get back on track. I hopefully will be buying some property in a couple of years. Now, if a man kind of, you know, falls in between that, that's fine. But I don't feel like, you know, my life is over, that the be all end all is having a man. I've had men. Bad ones, bad ones. And thankfully, and I think what Hallie is saying, thankfully I have matured enough that I'm not gonna make those same mistakes again. So I'm, I'm good being single. I don't it took me a while to find the perfect woman. So I just wanna yeah, point I, out, I wanna point out some comments online. We've got Angela Cherie from the Ever Evolving Podcast. She's online. Hey, hey, Angela. Angela. She says, hey, Angela. What, she, what she's doing and who she's doing ain't nobody's business. Thank you. Thank you. Candace Winston said, Liz, that hair is everything. <laughs> George Fournier told Rob B to, to tread lightly. <laughs> Sherry, <laughs> Sherry Blaine Priest said, Neo Nix, I'm glad you said it out loud. loud. Some individuals being players, unfortunately, true. Players also, Neo, you know, think about this. I'm sure, well, a lot of our um, audience that's into urban contemporary music, that's into hip hop, y'all have heard of the rapper Future. How many kids yeah. he got? by different women, at least seven. Eight. At least seven. seven. Eight, 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 eight. Never been married, he's been engaged a couple yeah. of times. But he has eight kids by several different women. Why is no one asking him or saying to him, he can't keep a woman? <laughs> why is the always on us? That's right, why, why she gotta, yeah, that's right, that's a good point. Why she gotta be. He has that's true. seven babies with seven different women. That's why he can't keep a woman. <laughs> <laughs> they're still having babies with him yeah he's that's, still that's, people keep dating him but you know his his eighth kid is a baby is a baby they're still having babies with him he's all right that was a good that was a good quick fire so lizzie you were part of an all-star panel of sports journalists today discussing that's diversity and inclusion in sports you with Bob Lee, BJ Specter. Did I say his name right? Yep. Check, check. All right. Yep. Check there. I knew I knew that. I knew that. It's just misspelled. <laughs> Michael Smith and Charles Grantham. So how was that? How was that experience? It was you did a great job. You really as a matter of fact, I think you uh you were the star of the uh, the show. Thank you. That's important. I want to thank everyone that took the time out of their day, their lunch schedule to tune in. I was pleasantly surprised. There were a lot of friends there. There were my co-hosts were there. A lot of my students were there. So thank you so much for tuning in. I think that it was the topic was diversity in sports. Uh, and we were just exploring various issues and various reasons why. Oh, did we lose Lizzie? Come on, Lizzie. Lose me? Oh. No, we don't know. Sounds like we still got you. Hello. Okay, we got you. We Hello? got you. <laughs> Hello. We're good. You're good. You're good. You're here. Hello. Hello. You're it's good. It's been a hard day on the technical <laughs> side, y'all. It's been a hard day. Listen. But yeah, we went over a lot of topics about sports, about the lack of representation in the four major sports, um, whether it's you know players or on the coaching level in the executive level, ownership, the reasons for that, and who's responsible for, you know, building that bridge and making it better, making 
it's so that you don't have a league that has 5% of the players as black men or persons of color, but then only three actual coaches. So we, we had a good discussion, and, and a lot of the people who tuned in, they also had some good questions for the panel. There were some so that was as well. As that was fun as well. Matter of fact, I had a question for you that I held and didn't ask while I was on there because I figured I'd ask you tonight. So I noticed you guys talking a lot about blacks in sports, which is great. There were occasional mentions of Latinos, Asians, and females. But where do you think sports are at this point with overall diversity, particularly with women and Latinos? Depends on the sport. I mean, if you're talking about hockey, zero. Um, if you're talking about well, well, women, is a little bit different because when you're talking about sports in general, because most of the sports are divided by gender. At least I say five major because we're going to talk about the WNBA here as well. They have their own league. But when you talk about NBA, NFL, MLB, and NHL, you know, those sports. But those are sports, in those discussions today, you did talk quite a bit about um, ownership and. Uh, mm -hmm coaches, et cetera. So, and those are not I, limited to like, I, I mean, gender. What I meant to do though was bring in the gender aspect. We didn't have enough time for that because I specifically wanted to talk about how, um, especially now since you have, you know, um, women in the NBA as assistant coaches, you have women in the NFL as assistant coaches. And every time there's a milestone, that's brought up in the media. They congratulate so-and-so for being the first woman or the first black woman to coach in this league or whatever. Men lose their minds. They lose their minds. And so I didn't get an opportunity to bring that up, but it's happening. You know, it sometimes the wheels of justice turn slowly, even as it relates to diversity. Um, I think for gender, it's gonna take a little bit longer. One, because again, the sports tend to be separate. But also, you know, there is a huge pushback by men in general. But as it relates to race, um, there isn't, there aren't separate leagues. Like we don't have the Negro leagues anymore. Okay, so everyone is playing together. And so you would assume that once your playing career is over, once a player um, has decided to retire, if they want, there would be an opportunity for them to move up to the top as it relates to being maybe an executive, someone in the front office, or they could be a coach, or they could look into ownership. But those opportunities are few and far between for minorities in these sports. And so that's one of the things that we did, you know, focus on and discuss a lot today. Um, I think that I came up with the phrase, you know, that diversity in sports seems to have a glass ceiling because you're dealing with it, a lot of young black males and with the WNBA, young black females who um, come from humble beginnings. And so a lot of people in the general population just look at them and say, they should be grateful for what they got. Mm -hmm. They should be grateful that they're in a league where they can make millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Why are you complaining? Go spend your money. You're done. Go spend your money. You don't need to be a coach. When in reality, if you look at a lot of coaches in these leagues, nepotism is a huge, huge, huge factor. A lot of coaches, especially coaches who older coaches who've had longevity, you look on their coaching staff, their firstborn son is here, secondborn son is there, nary a bit of talent. And, and also who you know. So like a lot of people, you know, like friends of friends and, you know, good old boys, clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. So basically, you know, we were talking about how, you know, representation is important, but also you can't have this, okay, well, we're going to interview someone for a coaching position just so we can say we interviewed them for a coaching position, but we know we're not hiring a black man to coach this team. And that tends to happen over and over and over again. Well, it was a great conversation. Great conversation. I know you put it up, uh, the, the full video is up on our webpage, on our, I'm sorry, on our YouTube and our Facebook page, all right? I didn't post it. Did you? Did oh, you no, it maybe we haven't posted it yet. Okay, but we'll post that <laughs> after the show. We'll post that <laughs> right after the show. We'll get the full video up there. All right. all right, if you've never been to TLS before, let me tell you a bit about us. Our hosts share their truths and opinions with you, call out those lies, and point out any ridiculous shenanigans going on. And on our show, we always try to have some fun with some shenanigans of our own. 
Our show does stream live just about everywhere. YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch TV, and TikTok Live. Just tell your friends to search at TLS Live Show across all those platforms. Also, make sure you subscribe to the audio replay of the podcast on iTunes, Google, Alexa, Pandora, iHeart. Find us wherever you watch or listen to your podcast. All right, before we get into our hot topics, in honor of Black History Month, every single show this month will be highlighting a different historical black figure. Today, we have friend of the show, Micah Payne, joining us from the Black on Black Cinema podcast for our TLS Spotlight on Black History. Today we celebrate screen legends Cicely Tyson and Denzel Washington. Welcome to the show, Micah. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Welcome back, Micah. Welcome, back. welcome, back. welcome, welcome, welcome Thank you. back. All right. Thank you very much. I had a great time last time. Thank you for having me again. Oh yeah, we loved you. Our audience oh, loved you too. Yeah. So we're glad to have you back. All right, so let's talk about the amazing Cicely Tyson. Just passed away two weeks ago at the age of 96. Was an American actress and fashion model in a career spanning more than seven decades. She became known for portrayal of strong African American women. Tyson became the first African American actress to win the Best Actress Emmy Award, ultimately receiving three Primetime Emmy Awards, four Black Reel Awards, one Screen Actors Guild Award, and Tony Award, an Honorary Academy Award, and a Peabody Award. So quite quite a career quite a career so Mike, yes it's, tell me a little bit about what Cicely Tyson well tell me about a, remind everyone about who you are and tell us a little bit about black on black cinema and then just tell us what you thought of Cicely Tyson uh I am uh, a movie fan uh <laughs> me and my friends and we just decided one day that we would look at movie reviews and we wouldn't see the black perspectives, particularly on black movies, right? Like if white critics were to review a black movie, it would be from their perspective. And they like certain movies that, uh, that are engineered for them specifically to like. So we decided that we wanted to give our opinions on a wide variety of black movies and hence black on black cinema was uh, born um now in terms of cicely tyson i mean uh, what can you what else can you say right cicely tyson was a legend uh she had uh an incredible life an incredible career um from very humble beginnings uh quite frankly it's this american dream that people keep saying exists when you look at people like Cicely Tyson, uh, you, you kind of believe it. Mm -hmm. oh. um, I was going to say, so I know so, Lizzie, this is one of Lizzie's favorite, favorite, favorite. favorite. Favorite actresses. Um, she had a career that is that's, um, carried over and spanned more than seven decades. Okay, uh, I mean, most of us would be lucky to live that long, but to live that long and have you know twenty years, twenty or so years before you start your career um, is is truly amazing. And I remember the first movie that I saw with Cicely Tyson. Um, was of course the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, which my school, both my school, um, played every year for Black History Month, and then it also used to come on TV. It used to come on Fox every year for Black History Month, and it's told from the perspective of, I believe, a 110-year-old former slave, and so she narrates the entire movie. And so I remember I used to get in trouble for this, but you know, a 110-year-old woman. Her voice may be a little scratchy or scraggly. So, right. so Tyson, you know, throughout the entire movie, when she's narrating, she talks like this. And so I used to run around talking like that all through Black History Month. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Thing. I, I always thought, I always noticed in movies when they dress people up and to look older, there's so many actors that do not change their voice because you know, voices when you get older, you start to like go slower. It rumbles a little bit. And actors, and you can always That's tell true. when actors in makeup because they don't change their voice. That's a good point. That's oh, a yeah. great actor. Yeah, she, 
all the time. And my dad thought, I think both of my parents actually thought that it was so disrespectful. So disrespectful. But I got a kick out of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, you know, yeah. and yeah, but I, I recently because I, I had seen that movie a long time ago. It was my my aunt had recorded it because it, it, it was originally a CBS made for television movie. And she recorded it on, on VHS and, and she was watching it one day and I was watching it. And it was that was one of the first times that I, you know, yeah heard the n-word spoken aloud you know what i mean and it was so i i decided to rewatch it and man she she really transcends everyone else in that movie right because it's the 70s you know some of these people are not good actors but when you put them up against cicely tyson like it like the the delta is just it's astronomical because she was she was yeah she was she was a, a an incredible talent she would all she's the type of actress that uh no matter what she popped up in no matter how good or or utterly garbage the movie is looking at you tyler perry movies um she classed she she classed those oh, no, movies up just a bit <laughs> But, but uh, look, don't get me started on those. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, man, it, it, she was, she was, she was a phenomenal talent, and she lived, uh, she lived to be ninety six, and that is, like you said, that's something that. I mean, I'm hoping and praying. Can, can I can I admit to and working? Okay. Yes, and yeah. and working. can I admit to something? I thought she was our yeah. best, and I heard. You know, there are some things you need to keep to yourself in public, you know? Was, I mean, my, wife got, my wife said the same thing. My wife was like, what? Are you, what's wrong with you? I'm just, I gotta, sometimes I just got to be honest. I was like, oh, wait. I, I, I don't know, I'm not sure I'm not the only one that has looked up and saw that someone passed away, and they were like, wait, I thought they were already gone. I mean, she, was literally, you know, she was literally she, in a movie ever. in 2020. <laughs> I know, I know. I, yeah. I, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm just an idiot. So I'm allowed to be an idiot once in a while. That's just all you want. I'm sure, I'm sure Lizzie has a ton to say on that one. All right, Robbie Rock and Gianni, I wanted to give you a chance to say anything about Cicely Tyson if you have some comments or thoughts. Yeah, um, I really feel like when I saw, and it's so funny that you were like making fun of the Tyler Perry movies, and the first time I think I've seen Cicely Tyson and recognized her for who she was was in a Tyler was in that Tyler Perry movie, and I was like, oh, like I loved her even though her role was just like the grandmother that kind of like made this big speech and stuff. So um, every role she does, she's a, she embodies like she is the character completely. I think that's rare for actors to do. There's a lot of like actors acting, like they, they look like they're acting, even some of the best. So yeah, she's one of the rare ones. <laughs> Robbie yeah, Rock. Someone with, someone with an, an illustrious career that's like yeah, nothing that hasn't been said already. It's, uh, she, yeah. she had a wonderful career that spanned several decades and just, just a powerful, powerful presence on screen. And I mean, very well celebrated on both on and off screen. So. It's uh, yeah, it's sad to see someone like that go. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Jasmine Robinson says she refused to play demeaning roles. Um, she says uh, it was. She also says it was considered a landmark movie because of the makeup and the way she was allowed to age progressively. Mike Winter says she she was still good in How to Get Away with Murder in her ninety. And uh. <laughs> I think Mike Winter was responding to me about uh, Cicely Tyson and uh, saying, calling me a Bama. And then, uh, but Kevin Thaxton says, Neo Nicks, I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> oh, wow. You guys are crazy. They run in the same circles. They run in the same circles over. <laughs> Barry Winter wanted to know which Tyler movie, uh, what's the name of the movie? That, uh, she was oh in. man, uh, she was in a couple. She was in a Fall from Grace, which was just uh, a horrendous movie. But it's one of those movies that's so bad that I I can't help but to laugh at it. 
she was also in Medea's Family Reunion. She was in Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Um, again, look, I'm not, and that's the thing with Tyler Perry. I respect the man's hustle. I just do not respect his art. I I, I, I don't respect his art, but not I, a hustle. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Where I really haven't, I've seen snippets of Tyler Perry movies, but I've never seen a Tyler Perry movie in full, never watched any of these uh, TV shows. And, you know, my mom is from the South, but we never saw Sandia grow. Like, that just wasn't our experience growing up. And it's not my genre of cinema. And I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I like I respect his house. I respect that he employs black people. I respect that he has built like the black Hollywood studio now in Georgia. Totally respect that. It's just his movies, his idea of cinema and storytelling is not my thing. Not your cup of tea. Yeah. yeah. No, not at all. 100% agree. <laughs> we, we also wanted to uh, highlight Denzel Washington's um, Denzel Washington. So Denzel Washington is an actor, director, producer. Uh, in 2020, the New York Times ranked him as the greatest actor of the 21st century. He's received 17 NAACP Image Awards, three Golden Globes, one Tony Award, two Academy Awards, one for playing Best Supporting Actor for the Army Soldier Private uh, in historical drama Glory, and he was the first black man to. He was the second black man to win Best Actor for his role as the corrupt detective Alonzo Harris in, in the crime thriller Training Day, 2001. So, quite, quite real. So, Mike, what are your thoughts on the amazing Denzel Washington? Denzel Washington or is, is overrated? amazing. Uh, I don't think he's overrated. I, I, I do enjoy Denzel Washington, um, but I, I've seen so many Denzel Washington movies that he is Denzel Washington in a role instead of mm. the character, right? Mm. Like, I don't see the character. Mm. I see Denzel Washington acting. And, and look, a friend, look, the, my, the, the guy I do the show with, he, you know, He's pro black, right? He's trying his best. He's like, well, well, I see it as Denzel just d taking the role and making it his. And like, uh, okay, but like, nah, yo, like, like, I, I the, the unstoppable and the taking of Pelham one, two, three, and those are roles built around like, the character, the person Denzel. Uh, right, he was like, that's Denzel, like, basically, it was right, the, like that's written for that's him. The, like. The, there are very few movies that I that I am just like completely lost and forget that. But let's, that let's talk, I mean, Malcolm X. Movie. Come on, he embodied Michael Ma Malcolm X pretty well. I think he did a very good job as Malcolm X, but yeah. again, he doesn't really look like Malcolm X, right? Like I watched One Night in Miami. Uh, I forget the name. I forget the name of the yeah. actor. Um, it, it was the same thing, you know, with um, Chadwick Chad Boseman. Never should have played the role of Thurgood Marshall ever, because there, yeah, was so I, much, I, there was so much that went into Thurgood Marshall physically, aesthetically, as a right. light-skinned black man, and how oh, he was that man, gay. That's you, black man. But not, but but particularly a lighter-skinned black man with slick hair, and how he was able right. to navigate and deal with white folks during the civil rights movement, during the 50s and the 60s, in a way that a dark-skinned black man never would have been able to do. So you, so guys, I, right. so you guys are of the, okay, so you, you believe that, so there's colorism as far as you're concerned. You should, you should, if you play a role, you should have, you should also match the shade that the person was, if you do a biopsy. If it's an actual, like, person, it's an actual person and if their color is a part of their story, absolutely. I, I, see, I think I think I was able to buy I think I was able to buy Denzel Washington's Malcolm X regardless of the fact that he was playing a lighter skinned person. I don't know. I I I, I don't know that I can he agree. I kind of agree. Or with For me, it did, I don't job. think he looked like him. But. It didn't bother me as much in Malcolm X as it did the Thurgood Marshall movie because again, that is a part of the history of Thurgood Marshall. Was and so he was lighter skinned. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and there that is true. I mean, it did play into his ability to even become a, a justice. And that's not a 
knock against Chadwick. I mean, you know, we did a full dedication on Chadwick Boseman. We love him as an actor. I just think he was miscast. But that goes to the lack of good minority casting directors in America. And we're getting off topic. We're getting off topic. Let's get back to the I feel like Robbie Rock has some comments. <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about one movie in particular, but yeah, but I'm gonna know if you have some comments. Look, you look like you had something to say. I was, I was about to jump. Oh to God, no! I, I'm enjoying the conversation because I mean, to me, like actors are actors. They play the role, and I really like what Micah had to say. Where it's just he's such a powerful force on screen that it's Denzel as this character. And yeah. now that you, when you mentioned, I was like, you know what? He's onto something. And it's kind of like Forrest Whitaker as, well, I'm only going to see Forrest. That's every time. I'm only <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult Forrest. once you reach a certain level. It's it's a little difficult. Like, the I, think, I mean, when he played Edie, when, when Forrest was... Whitaker played Edie Amin, I'm sorry, I, w I bought it all the way. I thought I was watching Edie Amin. Well, that's a role that was made for it. Like, I could see if it was a role that was made for him, but I definitely see what you guys mean. Like, like Denzel has surpassed that, like, he was he's a household name and, and it's kinda like the same for um well let's stick to black actors. But yeah, sorry. Continue. It's like the same thing with Tom Cruise, right? I don't see Tom Cruise as a character. I see Tom Cruise as Tom Cruise jumping off of planes. Right? It's like the same I see Tom yeah. Cruise. It's the same thing. It's with a, yep, the same thing with Sam Jackson. It's, yeah. it's hard to Samuel, yes, I agree. I agree 100% yeah, yeah. with Samuel. It, he is very much typecasted into a particular type of character. So I agree 100% with, but I think Denzel is a very versatile actor. He's a very versatile oh, actor, I, but it's like, you know, when you have played so many roles, there are going to be some misses. That's just oh, like sure, sure, sure. You know, I think Prince is probably the best musician of all time. But Prince has some bad albums. I'll be the first to tell you, Prince has some bad albums. Some garbage song. I listen to him because I love Prince, but come on, some of that stuff is like, okay, dude, what were you doing? What were you thinking? But Denzel, I mean, when you have something, everything's not going to be great. There's, there's going to be some stuff where you're like, eh, maybe you should have passed on that. Before we get into the most recent movie, though, I just want to say to the panel and to our guests who are speaking, who are watching, um, if you haven't seen it already, in my opinion, one of Denzel's best movies was one of his first movies, 1984, Soldier Story. This was before he was, you know, this was before he was Denzel the star, before he was Denzel two-time Academy Award winner. It is an amazing movie. And I saw it when it first came to video, got on video, VHS, as a child. And I am oh, wow. so enthused. I watched it over and over and over again. Loved it. My dad and I used Those to sit there story. and watch it with me. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And there are a lot of good notable actors in that movie as well who got their first start in that I was movie say, My favorite well. was oh, Devil cool. in the Blue Dress. Da David Allen Greer is in that movie. He looks the same. He looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I, I second that. A Soldier Story is a phenomenal movie. It's a mystery, right? And it is, it is, and and um, right. It's a who done it, and and it's all about who killed Adolf Caesar. Like, and and that that's the actor's name, not the character's name. And it's a great movie. It, I I one hundred percent agree with you. Uh, go seek that movie out. It's very good. So Kevin Thacker right. says, Equalizer movies in the book of Eli, my favorites after Man on Fire. All those are great movies. Um, oh, wow. I forgot the book of Eli. Man on Fire was that a was good movie. Good. Man on Fire was a good movie. Okay, Saima Fatima says, um, Training Day, I thought was great. Uh, and then Jose Jane says, Cole, Love Jane Man on Fire. Jose. Jane Cole ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Iconic. So Jackson Robson agrees with you. One racist referred to Thurgood Marshall as that high yellow N-word, uh, kind of hard to do when it's Chadwick Boseman, right, when you call him a high yellow, um, which it makes sense. Um, we get it. And then Daria uh, Winter said, Tom Cruise acting, question mark. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia says, Man on Fire was bombed. 
I agree with all of those. All right. So we did want to discuss before you leave, Mike. We wanted to go over the new movie from Denzel Washington. We wanted to see your thoughts on that. So let's play a little clip of the little thing. All the details, but he wasn't within ten miles of the killing. Why is that? Why is that? How's the trunk space? What do you want? I want to nail the bastard. For who? For all of the girls he killed. I want to nail the bastard too. The difference is, I'm doing this for me. It's a little things, Jimmy. All right, so. Micah. Spoiler alert. Spoiler oh, alert. So. Well, spoiler alert moving discuss. forward. We will be discussing parts <laughs> okay. of the movie, but that was just a okay. preview. So, Micah, oh, your thoughts. Like, your thoughts are on we, are we, the Denzel Washington. Are we, are, we, are we spoiling, spoiling, or just like. Spoil it all the way. We're careful. spoiling. We're spoiling. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> the, movie, the, the movie is fine. It is, it is a slow burn. Uh, uh, crime understatement. Understatement. <laughs> well, <laughs> over. It, it's like the the twist yeah. in the hair. It's slow burn. <laughs> if this movie is trying to be like seven, right? Mm-hmm. I remember, remember seven yeah. came out in ninety five. Oh yeah. It is the it is the gold standard when it comes to mystery crime movies, in my opinion. And this movie, with a script that was written in the 90s. Um, yeah, that's right. It, good point. It, it, for, and they, uh, there's some script problems with this movie. It works. But it's, it, it, <laughs> but it's okay. Like, and in terms of, if I went to see it in a theater, I would be kind of mad. But yeah. I'm sitting at home, I watched it on uh, HBO. I'll give you that. It yeah, was sitting fun. at home. It wasn't bad. Yeah. All right. right. So let's start with uh, let's go with Robbie Rock on it. What are your thoughts about <laughs> the movie? What's your review? My wife and I watched it last night, and I mean, we enjoyed it. Didn't hate the movie. It uh, right. definitely had like yeah, I think slow burn. Yeah, there's definitely some moments because I was pretty tired last night. And I know towards the end, and if you're taking a late drive down the highway <laughs> and it's a low hum and it's just a conversation between two people if i'm in the back seat of that car i'm doing the same thing that i was doing in my bedroom last night just oh, oh okay i'm back i'm back, I'm back. okay and you listen, okay, i didn't miss anything but i mean but there were some slow moments but it helped build some of the ambiance and some of the suspense the underlying suspense that was happening i enjoyed jared leto's performance he plays creepy really well yeah, uh, he always says something with that. He's Denzel. He always plays it Denzel's himself. <laughs> and yeah. performance of the character, I enjoyed. Yeah. It's a, I, I found some of the, the, the character, you were able to connect with the characters on a very human level. So it really, I didn't mind the movie. I thought it was okay. All right, Lizzie. Well, let me go with Johnny. Let me go with Johnny. Right, Johnny, what were your thoughts? I can't get over the, how it ended and just the plot the like the breaking point or i don't know the movie terms but i just i can't get over it and it makes me so mad because i really wanted to like the movie because i i just felt like the acting was it was very well like they did very well um denzel in the movie i found that um like with this type of role i feel like Denzel can't you can't overact you know what I mean in as an actor you can't overact you can only play what the what the character is and I think he did that very well um overall like if I was to rate it I would give it a seven or a seven and a half be right. nice that's, I like it that's actually a okay. good uh, rating uh so Lizzie this is out of 10 or 100, Johnny? What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine might be out of 100, uh, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, my uh, God, Lizzie. Hopefully Denzel doesn't hear this. <laughs> I didn't 
I didn't hate it. I'm, I'm with, I'm with Micah. I didn't hate it with Rob as well. I didn't hate it. It's just, I had, this movie has three Academy Award winners in it. And so I had such high expectations giving that in the resume and given the trailer, like the trailer had so much excitement or whatever. And again, I don't want to spoil too much, but all the excitement is that's in that movie is in that two minute trailer. It's a slow it's yeah. a, it's a, it's it's more about the psychology of a homicide detective than it is about the actual crime or the killer. Hundred percent. Yeah. It, it takes a while to get used to that. And you know, Denzel and Jared Leto were both fine in their acting roles. I thought Rami Malek was terrible. Terrible. Again, oh my god, was, thank he you. Wasted. He, his, his he was character didn't need to be there at all. He was, he was the weakest, he was the weakest link oh, in that trio. That was going to be my biggest disappointment is freaking yeah, Rami yeah. Malek. I mean, because he is a great actor. He Which one just, did he play? I don't know the actor's name. Uh, he played the, he played the, uh, the detective, the uh, lighter skin detective. Yeah, the, 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 oh. the young officer. The young um, and you know, he, yeah. in, if he has a twin brother, and so I was like, well, isn't his twin? Like, did they do? <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> Horrible. A little switch up. <laughs> because I know he can act better than what he was giving you. Like, you get nothing from him. Like, you maybe get something from him. I don't know in, like, what character time. he was playing. His first interactions with Denzel, anything after that? I, I was like, no. So, and I watch a lot of crime stuff. I am killer show queen. And so I was just expecting <laughs> much and it was just mm. yeah, me with movies with me and movies i expectations play a big role in how much i tend to like or dislike it because when i walk in with certain expectations um you know uh, then it, it kind of messes me up when the expectations aren't met or so when i'm looking at rami malik and then you know denzel washington and jared leto i'm like oh my god this is going to be an amazing and i blame the director actually because yeah. i think it was a reasonable script Decent plot. I mean, plot was, you know, there were issues, but there were so many things that they missed. I mean, they missed the final reveal was not very well done where, you know, you find out about Denzel. Yeah, and, I think and there I don't was want a lot to say what it is. I don't want to just go all in, but I don't, I, I mean, that was poorly done. If you, from the very first scene was poorly done because it was unbelievable. Why would, and I, I guess I can give the first scene, but why would a, a young girl, Get out of her car. Yeah. Which, which I think was, we were all yelling at the screen. When, right, when, 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 <laughs> when, when, when at that like point, why? all he had done was pass her a couple of times. So he, he didn't build, the, the, the director didn't build the scene well enough for us to make it feel the ten, intensity of certain scenes. It was just poorly done to me. But again, expectations were extremely high. Again, if I were watching this and it was, so so actors, I would be like, oh, it was a good movie. It was enjoyable. And, you know, I can get over some of the plot problems and the, you know, I can get over some of the unbelievable things. But overall, I was just disappointed. I was highly disappointed. Um, because like, like Rob said, I also was tired, Rob, when I watched it. So I so, thought, you know, okay, th this movie, they're hyping it up and what have you. The trailer looked amazing. So this is going to keep me up for the next two hours before I turn on ID Discovery and watch real killer shows. And it was just like, okay, let me just go back to the real thing because this was totally lacking. All right. So, Neil, I, ha I, can, I can only give you, offer up one piece of advice as a friend. When it comes to entertainment, check your expectations at the door because... Yeah, I'm not golden goose. You gotta have some some level of expectation. As <laughs> entertained, be entertained and be told the story. No, I, I get really yeah, critical of will. like movies. I expect to be good too. So, <laughs> so, uh, so let me get to the Same. comments online. We're kind of out of time. So, George Fournier, he was great in Philadelphia. Also, um, yep. Let's see. Oh, there was a question, Micah. Can you give us current? Give us one current and one past movie that's must watch. I'll let you do that in a second. Um, Denzel is edible in his old age. This is Olivia. Girl, you Kevin married Jackson. Miss Olivia. You married Miss Olivia. <laughs> She's too funny. <laughs> Kevin Jackson <laughs> repeated what Robbie says. Uh, if you don't expect too much from me, you might not be let down. But uh, I don't. I don't. I don't. 
I know. Micah, I'd like for you to, one, answer um, Olivia's question of, you know, just name one current movie and one past movie, and then tell people where to find the Black on Black Cinema podcast, tell them where to find you, and, uh, you know, close us out. Um, Denzel movie or just movie period? Movie period. Something uh, that you, something that uh, must watch. Um, I'll give you two must watch, must watches. Uh, one is The Spook Who Sat By The Door. Uh, these are past movies. The Spook Who Sat By The Door, which is uh, about, <laughs> which is about uh, a, a, a black man infiltrating the CIA, using that knowledge to uh, pass on to other black people to maybe try to use it to their advantage. Uh, this is a wonderful movie. And The Watermelon Man. Uh, 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 the Watermelon Man is a movie about a bigot, a white bigot, who wakes up one day as a black man and oh, yeah. all of that like the, and all of that that he has to deal with now as a black person isn't and, it like um, soul porn no 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 this is this is much better than, than soul man oh my god uh, no this is this one this is a black actor in white face who wakes up in his normal black skin <laughs> all right are you um yeah well, we, we gotta we gotta this close is, it down so are you looking forward to judas and the black messiah i'm very much looking forward to judas and the black messiah also check out malcolm and marie uh it's on netflix starring john david washington um, all right, and where can yeah, we find that's, you? Uh, that's a, you can find me at blackonblackcinema.com, facebook.com slash blackonblackcinema, youtube.com slash blackonblackcinema. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much again for joining us. We'll have you back soon, Micah. Thank you, Micah. Great job. Right. Thank Thanks, you very Micah. much. Awesome. So I guess awesome. We, like talk, we like talking movies, huh, y'all? Clearly, like clearly. Really. I know. <laughs> I see. Hey. Yeah. We'll definitely be bringing Micah back because uh, he's awesome as always. I would, yeah, like he's... Very, very, I would like to, because I don't know very much about Canadian cinema, Robbie. So maybe we do a future show where we just kind of highlight some good Canadian actors or Canadian cinema. Like, oh, what y'all watching? Yeah. yeah, that's true. So I can definitely there. highlight some Canadians. Yeah, Jay Baruchel comes to mind right off the top of my mind as far as a director, producer, writer, actor. He's a brilliant kid. But yeah, well, absolutely for another show. All right. Yeah, it's a topic. We got couple hot topics. shenanigans. All right, so like Hot Topics Works, our hosts bring you hot topics they want to share. We'll ask, is this true about shenanigans? And our panel will talk about it for a bit until time is up. And then we'll go to our audience for questions and comments. So make sure you're talking to us in our threads as you have been. All right. So, Robbie, you've got some YouTubers paying the ultimate price for their prank. Is this truth, lies, or shenanigans? It's, uh, Truth and shenanigans, as most of the time it is. So yeah, just outside of an urban air trampoline center. Um, so this was uh, Timothy Wilkes, a, a 20-year-old man, uh, decided that he would arm himself with a butcher knife on a Friday night while taking part in a prank robbery for a YouTube video. So went to the parking lot with a friend who was filming, They and then just rushed towards a group of people in the parking lot uh, by the urban air trampoline adventure park around 9 30 at night if you are with a small group of friends and someone brandishing a big knife is coming at you if you're armed you may feel inclined to defend yourself and that's exactly what they what this what one of the individuals did they shot and killed this poor kid um so i mean really should the shooter or any of the prank victims be charged for shooting this young man? And what advice would you have for other social media contributors that may be thinking of engaging in this kind of activity? Start with uh, Gianni Storm. What do you think? Um, I feel like uh, it's a really like is I don't see this type of thing happening because I even looked it up after this after you gave us this article, Rob. So I don't see this being a common thing, but I do know sometimes influencers and YouTubers um, they mistake creativity with 
extremity or being or just being outrageous and they think that's thinking like recklessness is is thinking outside of the box so i think that as far as advice just be original and creative you can do something the same prank a million different ways so hey keep that in mind um but i feel like as far as who this speaking on this specific scenario who should be charged that's not to say because technically the friend who was with him isn't to blame um the guy who was ended who ended up shot is his own man as well so he did put himself in that position and the man that shot him of course that's self-defense from what he claims so that's hard I being I do attacked feel like by somebody with some... uh, put your knives yeah yeah exactly um i think i i don't know i feel like the situation might have been punishment enough because it was traumatizing but that's just me you guys know I'm a softie sometimes. <laughs> Lizzie. So. You know, I've said this before on the show, and I guess I'm going to have to keep saying it again. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And I don't mean to sound callous when I say that, but I've yeah. seen so many of these videos on the internet about people pulling pranks on folks, um, whether it be not necessarily with a butcher knife, but you know, you're dressed up as Michael Myers and you come jump out at somebody, you know, trying to scare them or, you know, you jump out of your car and you chase them. Like I always say, somebody's going to get hurt one of these days. And sure enough, like you can prank, prank your friends in a situation where you kind of can read the room and you can gauge what's going on. Don't come up to strangers like that. Do not roll up on strangers with some mayhem and foolishness. Certainly don't roll up on me. I mean, I, I, I granted, I don't carry a gun. I don't carry weapons, but you might be in for an ass whooping. Like that's not, fu it's not funny. <laughs> Seriously. It's not funny. And you are putting, you're making yourself vulnerable to the other person who does not understand your humor. So to answer your question, Robbie, no, I don't think any, in either side, I don't think anyone should be charged. I don't think anyone should be charged because the, the guy who actually shot this young man had no idea what his intent was. He didn't know this guy. He, I mean, what are you gonna do if somebody rolls up on you with a butcher knife? You're not going to say it. Most people don't stand there and say, oh, for real, what you doing with that? No. no. You move yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, we think it's real. No. And for the victim and his friend, I mean, truthfully, no crime was committed on their part either. Um, so it, it really is a tragic accident. And you feel for everyone involved. I'm really but surprised. Y'all got to stop this. Stop this. I'm really surprised this. this hasn't happened sooner. So because I have seen some crazy videos i saw one video where the guy was pranking. he took a um he took a plunger right and took the plunger and there was a bald-headed dude he took the plunger and plunged him on his head and the guy See? was pissed and the plunger got See? stuck to his head and he was running he was trying to fuck he was trying to not hit the guy and See? i'm like oh i would <laughs> i would have done some Sorry. stuff <laughs> See? i mean but there are even there, there's so many of these the videos strangers. that I have yeah. seen mm -hmm. of people just walking up doing random dumb stuff, crazy stuff. I mean, it's different when you walk up and you just say, "Hey, it's something stupid like, hey, how you doing? You you want to get naked, you know, <laughs> as a prank to some stranger? That's one thing. Because somebody will just look at you funny and be like, get away from me, like a harmless creepy. prank, right? A harmless, a relatively harmless prank. But when you start touching me. Attacking me, you know, but you don't know where the boundary lies. Because right. what if somebody that, like an older person, might you might have just dropped something that was meant to be scary on purpose or shock them, and they get they have like a heart attack. I've seen somebody attack. jump out of like a trash can with like a mask, and then he gets knocked out. I mean, what are you going to do? Knocked out hard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The, latest, the latest that happened over Christmas is, you know, for some reason, adults like to scare their children. Right. So they have all of these adults, particularly in this instance, black adults who um, they had their kid go and thought that they were going to go meet Santa or something like that. And then all of a sudden the Grinch comes out like a human Grinch. Oh, yeah, I saw that. The Grinch comes out kids were and terrified. You know, scare the kids. Well, a lot of the kids were terrified and ran, but a couple yeah. of the kids 
beat the hell out of the grid. Like they weren't playing. <laughs> beat the hell out they of should. The grid. They should. stood up. Yeah. All right, Robbie, I'll give you about 20 seconds. Any final thoughts? Yeah, well, that's it. When you charge at someone, you're going to get one of two responses fight or flight. And it, it, this isn't the first time that a social media it, influencer gets hurt or somebody dies doing a prank or staging something. And it's not worth the 15 minutes of fame. These, they need to be very calculated risks. It's just, just be smart, be careful, train with professionals if you have the opportunity learn what they do don't threaten strangers don't be perceived as a threat to strangers because you never yeah. know how someone is going to respond if they believe that their lives are in danger um i know that there's a brazilian prank show that they really jump up the fear one of their more famous gags was um a subway car that stops and then the lights flicker and then there's zombies at the window and then they start coming in through floor grates I'm sorry. I love zombie lore. I love it. And if, if zombies are crawling on the ground towards me, there's going to be a broken neck or a fractured yep. skull. I'm hurting That's somebody. going to be my response. Let them know, Rob. Let them know. Terrifying. Uh, yeah. Quick comments Don't online. Do that to me on a subway car. <laughs> Let them know. Andy DeFresna. Am I spelling this right? Dufresne. 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 Thank you. Andy Dufresne. <laughs> Obviously, I agree with Liz since I used the same phrase. <laughs> um, Jeanette, uh, especially not now, uh, everyone is on edge. Jack, uh, Jacqueline Brown says exactly, some people just play too much. Um, Olivia says, uh, oh, things are just jumping around. Hold on. Uh, uh, remember that girl that tried to scare her dad and he shot and killed her? So sad. She was like eight. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mike Winter says, catch these Canadian hands. Catch these Canadian hands. <laughs> All right, let's get to our next hot topic. Last one, Yanni Storm. Shenanigans. You've got some Asian Americans looking for some allies. Is this truth, lies, or shenanigans? This is true. So um, a recent article on Vice has spoke about Asian Americans that are calling on allies in the response of a, a wave of hate crimes that have been taking place. So three recent attacks um, on mainly senior citizens that are continuing to rise of anti-Asian racism during the COVID-19 pandemic. So the outcry comes out after um, January 30th of this year, um, after 84-year-old Thai grandfather who died as a result of injuries that he was shoved, when he was shoved um, to the pavement while taking a walk in San Francisco. So there's a graphic video that is circulating online, um, but I believe it's taken down. Obviously, nobody would want to see that. Um, so 19-year-old Antoine Watson was the one who was um, convicted and pled not guilty last week to charges of murder and elder abuse. Um, Asian Americans across the country have been using this attack as proof um, of this mounting issue. So the continued rise of anti-Asian sentiment and hate crimes in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, we know that um, our former leader has linked COVID-19 to Asian Americans, to Chinese people specifically. So the conver conversation con continues to build as a response to the recent attacks through hashtags like justice for Vicha and Asians are human. Um, people across the internet are asking for increased visibility of these stories, so some of which haven't even been reported on national publications or news um, coverage. So my question to the panel is, do you believe people will be on board for support of this outcry for Asian Americans? Or do you believe it will be brushed off? Um, I'll start. So do I believe that they will get um, the help they need? That, like the, the I would hope so, coverage. because um, there were, I mean, when African Americans were, you know, doing black, calling for Black Lives Matter, looking for allies, there were a number of Asian Americans who stepped up to that. And you know, these these Trumpers um, are a problem for all of them. Um, the reason, one of the big reasons that they're being attacked is because uh, Trump decided to talk about the China virus, Chinese virus. Wuhan virus and, you know, associating it with um, 
you know, if a particular group of people. Um, it was he he tried to argue that it was he was denoting it was from China, therefore it's Chinese. But that doesn't matter because you have to recognize the people that you're talking to. You have to understand your audience. When you're talking to an audience of Americans, all they hear is Chinese, China, and they associate it with racial along racial lines. So as a president, you're supposed to understand this fact and then stop doing it. But he refused to do that. And so now it's built up and these people, the same people that stormed the Capitol are, uh, you know, are um, the same type of people that stormed the Capitol are the same people who are attacking Asian Americans because they believe that this China virus was caused by them. Um, so, you know, it's a it's a real shame. Um, and I would hope we all step up and be allies to this, this fight that they're having um, because we need allies. Like everyone, I mean, we, everyone needs allies. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Any type of social fight that they're injustice that they're dealing with. Um, I'll be right. Shame on Antoine, Antoine for pleading not guilty. I mean, if, if you're a 19-year-old kid who's shoving an octogenarian to the ground, I mean, you know what you're doing. You, you know what you're doing. Hey, guys, watch this. It's, and unfortunately, yeah. this uh, anti-Chinese sentiment over the last year was really drummed up. Uh, it, was, it was one of his catch lines. And unfortunately, it spoke to a base of people who already had these ideas and it emboldened them, it reinforced the message and it gave them an opportunity to be, okay, well, I can be overtly racist towards people of Asian descent. And the problem was, you know, China, China was being attacked, but anyone of Asian descent, anyone who didn't look Caucasian or didn't look, didn't look black, then, you know, okay, so this is a Chinese person, it's, the coronavirus is your fault. Right. When you want to lash out at somebody, when you want to lash yeah. out at somebody, you're not going to fly to China and lash out at China. You're going to find a person that reminds you of someone from China and lash out at them. Yeah. And, it, it, and Johnny, this isn't something that is reserved uh, to the U.S. There have been attacks in Canada that targeted uh, people of Asian descent. Um, and it, it's not correct. It, it's the, it, these are violent, racist acts. So, so I'm with you, Johnny. I really hope that people will rise up because this is just another cry to end racism in all of its forms. Yeah. Is he, is he under? Good point. All, all of its forms. I just want to make the point that I'm going to put this in the perspective of New Yorkers because over the summer I taught a class with the schools in New York Times about um, New York City, reporting on New York City. And this was coming out of, or actually going into the height of the COVID numbers in NYC, okay? And so I had one of the um, leaders of the, of the Chinatown community in New York City come and talk to my students. And there were a number of attacks in, of attacks in Chinatown in New York City. A number starting from I would say late February up until the latter part of the summer and they have kind of tapered off a little bit but they they're still there and the majority of these attacks were not committed by Trump were not committed by Trumpsters these were committed by yeah. <laughs> black and Latino people so a lot of people like Lap, like pointed out to or alluded to just now, a lot of people are using this as an excuse to have their racism manifest into something. So as so it, deplorable as I think Trump is, he's not responsible for all of this stuff. A lot of this stuff was already there. A lot of this stuff is coming from people who have no affiliation, who do not believe anything about Donald Trump. They just want to act on their inner racism. And I mean, the, the young man that I talked to for my class, who is a leader in Chinatown, he was talking about how not only did a lot of the businesses have to shut down because restaurants and so forth were on lockdown for a little bit, but when they reopened, nobody wanted to go there. And if they did reopen, a lot of the businesses were vandalized. A lot of the Chinese workers or Asian workers, because in Chinatown, it's not just Chinese people that live there, but Asian people, if you will, Asian Americans, if you will, they were attacked. 
they were accosted. Um, there was one, we had video of one young man who was sitting on his stoop and just this random kid, looked like he was maybe 18 at the most, came up and threw acid on his face. This is for giving us the coronavirus. So it, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so do, I, do I think that Trump helped, you know, exacerbate the issue? Absolutely. But there, if, in certain cities, there's already been this conflict between the Asian community the black community, the Latin community, Latino community, and this just made it worse. Right. Um, so do I, th do I think that they have allies? I do think that they have allies, but I also think that it's a serious threat to their community that our leaders, whether it be at the local level or at the, the state level or the federal government needs to step in and take this seriously. Yeah. Needs to step in and take this I think seriously. Biden is with the, I mean, I think the DOJ is now with Biden. Um, so my point on Trump, and I see some comments online related to that as well, but um, so I don't believe that Trump is responsible for racism towards Asian Americans. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is similar to what Robbie was saying, Trump is responsible for emboldening them to be able to act out on the existing racism. It's the same thing towards African Americans. The racism is there, there's no question, and the racism between different groups, because there's a lot of Latinos that don't like blacks, there's a lot of Asians that don't like blacks. So, it, but what happens is when you have someone like your president of the of, of country um, saying that this is okay, then it emboldens them and it makes it more prevalent, more active, more, more it happens more often. It, it, like the, the thing says, it, it increases, it, it's a growing number of, and I agree with you, but let's again, let's just not be naive that a lot of these people aren't listening to Trump, probably never even heard Trump's message. And as Mike Winter pointed out, I mean, this isn't the first time. You know, if you guys haven't read it, read No No Boy, the story No No Boy. Look up the history of um, Japanese internment camps after World War II. Like this is this is you know something that has been ongoing in this country yeah, as it relates. Those numbers would level out. Um, I mean, they would level um, out. What I'm saying is the increase is due to that's what I'm increase the, the growing wave is due to Trump and his emboldening these groups of people to say we can do these things. We can. It was the so same. you're so um. Do you think that if Trump would have never had um said anything so, mentioning? Um, uh, that it was due to China is China is just the cause him of saying the China virus. It, it's his and, and Trump to said it. China is working with us. They have provided us with their medical data. They have provided us with research data. They're an ally, and they're working with us to try to develop a COVID vaccine or or global response. <laughs> Is a very different message than saying it's the China virus. It's it's they're dirty. It's yeah. It's what, the, it is. It, 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 what? It is a no, different message. He, yeah. It's a. Can I agree? It reminds me of Hitler, how he vilified the Jews in the 30s before he mounted his big thing. It's yeah. It's but a very also, similar message. But it also needs to be pointed out again that there have been underlying tensions, and I'm specifically speaking about urban communities predominantly black, predominantly Latino communities in this country. There have been underlying tensions with members of the Asian community for decades. And so true. Regardless, regardless of if Trump had said anything, this, as soon as you say this virus originated in China, boom, it's a trigger. So that's, that's, the, that's the second true. part of it. That's the second that's part of it. Because yeah, it's the same thing that happened with 9-11. Yeah, so it, it's, yeah. I'm, not trying, to, I'm yeah. not trying to absolve the Trump of anything here, but there's also this other problem in urban communities where it's just like, okay, well, we already didn't like them, but now the news is saying that this virus originated in China. So you so look Chinese, whatever that means, and so I'm going to go after you. All right, so let's get to these comments really quick. Uh, Daria Winter, after he was negotiating trade deals in China and they refused to cave, but the tax on Chinese is not new. Uh, Jose says it's happened in Canada and uh, people lashing out pure ignorance. 
Um, and then uh, Mike Winter tells a quick story. So I personally led a group to cancel this volleyball Bama, who was hosting a tournament during the pandemic despite the China virus comment, as he said it, uh, quote, as he said it. Uh, his event was done. He was done. Folks came after his government contracts. Consequences for racism are real. Um, that's, uh, Saima Fatima says racism against Asians has been around for decades. Uh, Mike Fournier, George Fournier says, uh, when I speak to a Trump supporter, I'm told they like him because he says that several people are thinking but are too scared to say out loud. He gave Ray them permission. I, I, I fully agree with the idea that he gave them permission and said, it's okay to be a racist. Yep. It's okay yeah. to be a xenophobe. It's okay mm -hmm. to be homophobic. He gave them all permission. But we have to take responsibility for the fact that we, some of us already had those sentiments to begin with. All right, good topic. This topic went a little longer than I expected. So it was a great, like, great topic. Shoot, shoot, lies, shenanigans. Again. All right, let's close it out with our game show. Get it done. This would be a fun one. We should keep it quick. You know, we like to end all of our shows with a game, fun game. Today's game is Ask. We're simply going round robin style, and the app is going to give you a random question to answer. Uh, you have let you try to answer in less than fifteen seconds, or I'll start putting the timer on. The person with the most interesting answers wins the final thought for the show. All right. So, for example, the question, the first question is going to, let's start with Lizzie Enders. You have been locked up for the night in a shopping center. There is no monitoring, and you will never be caught. What will you do? I already know the answer. What will you do? Oh, I thought it was Marketplace. What would I do? Lizzie Enders. Um, go to the, go to the yeah, what would I do? I would go to um, the nearest Chanel center because I have a Chanel that I need to replace. <laughs> I pulled it two years ago. I need to replace it. So I'm going to get my purse. I'm going to get my purse back. All right. So, oh, goodness. Of course, it's messing up on me. All right, there we go. All right. So, uh, Bob B., your favorite superhero is? Mm, I, I don't know if he's really a hero, but Deadpool. Oh, that's your favorite? Nice. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll go with Euro. He's funny. <laughs> Gianni Storm. NASA chose you to help establish a colony on Mars. This is a one-way trip. What do you take with you to Mars? To Mars? Oh, my Ooh. laptop. Definitely. <laughs> There's no internet. You didn't get Okay, so the, so suddenly internet and electricity is on Mars, and you're taking it with you. Okay. Uh -huh. Good. All right, so your last time. All right. Uh, uh, okay, so this is for me. How did you make your first money? Uh, my first, well, money. I'm counting allowance, I got allowance, and that was how I made my first <laughs> money. But if I'm talking my first job, my first job was with, was with People's Drug Store, uh, which is now oh, CVS. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That, no, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. I've heard of that before. <laughs> All right. This Enders. What do you keep in your basement? Oh, you don't have a basement. We're going to skip I it. I live you have a basement. Store. So what would you do with a million dollars? Honestly? Honestly? Chanel? Um, no. <laughs> Not Chanel. I, mean, I have a lot of Chanel. I'm not going to afford Chanel. Um, there are a lot of people <laughs> insurance who can't afford their insulin. Mm. So I would definitely, you know, donate to helping people in need of oh. insulin. And I'm, a, I'm a diabetic. I'm type 1 diabetic. And insulin is, you can't live without it. Like, if I didn't have my meds, I would be dead in 36 hours. <laughs> not, not joking. Wow. And there are a lot of people out there who don't have insurance. Insulin is very expensive. Mm -hmm. so, so I would definitely put that money towards that, 100%. Abby, have you uh, oh ever <laughs> did a ding-dong ditch? <laughs> Who hasn't? You ever did a ding Classic. dong dick? Who hasn't? And I live to tell the tale. That's that's a safe prank. <laughs> ding dong dick. All right. <laughs> Gianni Storm. Have that you ever been caught thing. during sex? Caught during what? Caught what? Yeah. Caught caught during what? sex. I don't know. Whatever you were doing during sex, you might have been. I have in. I ever yeah, been caught? Uh, Lizzie might be asking a, a more in depth questions. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, have I ever had been caught having sex? No. So if that was it. <laughs> All right. No, no. All right. I have it. Zombie apocalypse has started. Where will you go and what will you do? This is Neo. I would... It's yeah. already here. Terrifying. <laughs> That's true. I'd probably uh, I'd probably shelter in place. And then uh, there's a, uh, I know there's a the state Neo, police barracks down the road, so I'd probably go grab some guns from there. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, this is the last question, last question, last round. All right, if you could be someone else for a day, who would it be, Lizzie? Oh, um, I could be someone else. Gosh, I can't say Gianni Storm, Robbie Rock, or myself. <laughs> All good options. I would be Aladdin, and I would give myself twenty-five. <laughs> Aladdin. Uh, All right. Unique. All right, Robbie Rock. Rich or famous? Rich or famous? I'll uh, take the riches. You can you can buy fame. You're already riches. famous, Robbie Rock. You're already famous. <laughs> yeah, we got the fame. Hi, right, Johnny Storm. Famous. Have you ever lied about your age? Have I? Yes. All right. I have lied about my age. And the last question for me: If you could fill your fridge for free with food or beverage of your choice, what would it be? Would, am I just picking Ooh. one thing? Probably, probably just... <laughs> pizza. Yep. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> my, my wife knows if I say anything else, that's a lie. So, <laughs> peace. <laughs> All right. Good job on the game show, guys. That was fun. All right. So, we got some shout outs. Let's get the final shout outs in. All right, Liz, who are you shouting out today? Again, everyone from the Ruta to the Tutor who tuned into today's diversity panel with Hall, with myself, Michael Smith, Bob Lee, Jay Schechter, Charles Grantham. Talk about diversity, and it's something that's going to be a continuing conversation until the day we die, until we decide to get ourselves together and be more open to people who don't look like us. I thank you guys for joining the conversation. All right, Robbie Rock. Lizzie, you absolutely killed it today with the diversity in sports uh, piece that you did this afternoon. It was absolutely brilliant. If you, if uh, members of our audience had did not tune in, please check it out. It's a worthwhile discussion about diversity in sport. A lot of salient points were, are, are made and should be implemented. So, yeah, shout out to my girl, Liz. All right. Good job, Lizzie. Um, well, good job, Liz, and shout out to Olivia. We will be going live um, tomorrow. Okay, we'll be going live Friday evening, and we'll be doing like a recap and just yeah. Wait, what time? Sorry, what time do we usually? Okay, 8 p.m. Friday Eastern Standard Time. This is the unscripted, unscripted web series on Instagram. Okay, 6 p.m. <laughs> right. My shout out is to my wonderful wife once again. We're taking a short vacation this weekend, so I'm very much looking forward to the break. And hey, if you want an official TLS shout out, follow our hosts on social media and reach out to any of them on their social media pages and they might shout you out. That, that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank you guys for joining us. We hope that maybe you learned something, gained a new perspective, or even got some things off your chest. Don't forget to follow like subscribe at tls live show if you missed any of today's episodes check out our clips online on youtube and don't forget to subscribe to the audio replay of the podcast on itunes or anywhere you listen to podcasts i hope you had fun today we did too we will not have a live show on sunday but we will have a tls replay so you can still check us out our next live show is on wednesday february 17th 8 p.m eastern 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll have a fantastic guest joining us. The Mademoiselle, who has an amazing, fun YouTube channel. So check her out. It's D-T-H-E-E, Mademoiselle. All right, so I have to pick the winner for today, and I'm going to go with Lizzie. I'm going to let you close this out. You had a wonderful day. You had a wonderful uh, pre presentation with Bob Lee and the rest of the crew. So close this out, Lizzie. Close this out for the night. So, Sunday is Valentine's Day, and despite what you heard, I love Valentine's Day. So, every year, my, my, 
someone, friends and foes, love somebody, even if it's just yourself. Love somebody. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next Wednesday. Have a great one. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> see you later.